I'd say it's impossible to find someone who hasn't been affected by cancer. We all dream someone will find the answer to this terrible disease. Today, a glimmer of hope. Professor Richard Scolia is one of the world's best cancer minds, with the world's worst brain tumour. He's offered himself up as a guinea pig for experimental treatment. Tonight, the combination of his extraordinary courage plus the genius of his colleagues could benefit cancer patients worldwide. It blew me away. I think it blew everyone away. It's blown away the whole brain cancer field, to be honest. Professor Richard Scolia certainly has a spring in his step. Hi, Ali. For someone told just four months ago, he has incurable brain cancer. Tell you what, today's a big day. Yeah, it is. Isn't it? Yeah, yeah we're excited. They're the best of mates and also the world's leading experts in melanoma. You both set out to apply what you know about skin cancer to treating brain cancer and you're smiling. So I'm thinking it's a little bit exciting. Well, it's... it is. For me, it is. I first met Richard and Professor Georgina Long two months ago. The 56-year-old collapsed and had a seizure in May. The diagnosis? The worst of the worst of brain cancers. I don't want to die. I'm, yeah, I'm not ready to die yet. I'm too young to die. I love my life. I really do. Ten years ago, melanoma was a death sentence, until they changed that. Now both Richard and Georgina refuse to accept his six to nine month prognosis. In a world first, they're using melanoma science to fight Richard's rare and deadly brain tumour. I would love it that if some of our knowledge and discoveries in melanoma, it's a small chance that it might actually work, but wow. He's my very best friend. And um, so for him to face, to think of him dying is just awful. And only a cancer researcher like Richard could take on this risk because he understands it. It's a huge risk. The treatment could kill him quicker, but it might also save him. I stand here today as the first brain cancer patient to have a personalised cancer vaccine with combination immunotherapy instead of standard treatment. Today is a milestone. Richard and Georgina are presenting their early findings about his treatment. The world and his family are watching. Yes, Richard is a patient of only one, but early scientific results are nothing short of phenomenal. There seems to be a little bit of optimism. Are you feeling that, Richard? Absolutely. That does fill me with hope. Um, to be honest, there's a strong chance that we wouldn't see any difference in my, in my brain tumour after that therapy. So, yeah, what happened blew, blew me away. I think it blew everyone away. It's blown away the whole brain cancer field, to be honest. Well, this is the hope that we were talking about, right? I was just so, so excited and happy and we weren't expecting the results we were and we saw absolute activation of uh, immune cells well wow. i mean nothing surprises me that that richard's body decided to fight back and fight back hard right that's exactly who you are i keep saying it's a no-brainer it's a bit of a joke but honestly it that that's what it feels like to me when you're facing certain death mm. so i'm guessing no regrets on trying something that's never been done before a absolutely not for close to 20 years, the treatment for this type of brain cancer hasn't changed. Surgery, chemo, radiotherapy. Everyone dies. There are no new drugs or clinical trials available. It's dire, but it's fact. Here you come along, Richard. You're, you're, you're one patient with one tumour, and it seems like what you've done in four months is greater than what we've seen in almost 20 years. I mean, how's that possible? So we've transformed melanoma. I want to give it a crack, see if we can make a difference in brain cancer. So I'm happy to be the guinea pig. We had an opportunity to at least show, wait a second, world, rather than going down through surgery and radiotherapy and chemotherapy, 
we can get an immune reaction. Mm. Trying immunotherapy after all those standard treatments when you've got no more immune system left, mm. we're just demonstrating you can. So let's try a little bit harder. It's just another example of you being willing to put your body on the line for a good cause, Richard. I feel fortunate that because of my knowledge in hard work that these are things that I'm able to do, but I sincerely hope it'll not just make a difference for me, it'll make a difference for future brain cancer patients. Richard's body is showing signs it's responding to the combination immunotherapy. I mean, you're calling it a scientific breakthrough. What have you found? A tenfold increase in immune cells. The immune cells were now activated against an enemy, so we can check that by the type of immune cells and what they're expressing. And the third thing is those immune cells were within the tumour, scattered within the tumour, and bound to drug therapy. So that's kind of like the tentacles of the tumour that the surgeon can't get to. That's the hope. This that's is the what, hope. Yeah. Because remember, this is what we did cut out. So this is mm. what we're seeing when, from what we've cut out. And we can see that the immune cells are all scattered throughout the tumour. So the hope is that the rest of the tumour that's still in the brain mm. has all those immune cells scattered throughout it, trying to kill it. He's still on his immunotherapy and he's had uh, the first vaccine, which was, mm. was well tolerated. So all of that together, you just, it's amazing. So two world firsts here in the, in the, in the immunotherapy side of it and also in, in the vaccine. I, I'd, I'd never even heard of a cancer vaccine before. Uh, what's the power in that? So the vaccine concept can be a little bit confusing for yeah. people. We're not talking like measles, you have a vaccine, you won't get measles. That's not the word vaccine we're using in this context, it's different. What we're doing is we're saying, okay, this is the cancer you have, what's unique to your cancer that no other cancer would have, mm -hmm. and then we replicate aspects of that uniqueness into a cancer vaccine, and then we inject it into the patient. And the concept is that that ramps up the immune reaction against the cancer. So his body is in overdrive right now fighting his cancer. I hope so. <laughs> I hope so. That's the hope. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, to be honest, I don't feel too bad. I'm yeah, still out exercising. I jogged 8K this morning. Um, are you for real? Yeah. yeah. You are the most optimistic and I love it. It's not just like a walk in the park and I'm back, no, no, no. you know, you, this is a man who runs 20 kilometres like that. It's been tougher for me, I'm a bit anemic so you can't do things like you used to do and various other effects on my body that, mm. that hold me back a bit and you feel a little frustrated about that and yeah I seem to crash out late in the afternoon and early in the evening pretty much every day and sometimes I don't sleep that well. I, have you had to sort of read the signs and pull him back at times and tell him to slow down? Not, not me so much, but um, his family have had to really support him. How is Katie and the kids? Yeah, they're, they're well, coping okay. I guess it's yeah. tough for all of us and yeah, we, we've cried at times and yeah, I've yeah. cried personally at different times. Um, yeah, but well, we're it's a hoping tough for the best. Mm. I want to make a difference. That's what I've dedicated my life for, and I'm facing virtually certain death. It um, mm. doesn't sit right to me to, to not try, give it a crack to see if we can make a difference. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm certainly comfortable in that, but mm. it isn't easy to, to do it. Well, you're patient zero, going where no one's gone before, aren't you? <laughs> it's true. With less than 6% of cancer patients in clinical trials, Richard and Georgina believe we could be curing more cancers. But it requires researchers and pharmaceutical companies to get on board now. Think big and be courageous. I'm not be prouder of him. But I have to say there are next steps. And the next steps are clinical trials. That has to be the next step. Um, we've done the groundwork, we've got some scientific data, it is one patient. Well what we have today that we didn't have four months ago is hope. Yeah, yeah absolutely, it's a change from where we were when we met up a 
a few months back. I know we have to tread cautiously because it's very early stages, but I mean, it almost makes me want to cry. I find it so inspiring because you set out to blow up everything that we know about treating brain cancer and, and you're doing it. When we talk about it, like we just did, it does make me feel emotional. You, um, you said to me last time we saw each other, it's a small chance that this might actually work. Is that might just a little bit bigger now? It is, Ali. It's changing the field and, yeah, it fills me with optimism. Because, I mean, even if we don't get the result that we all want for you, Richard, you've changed the world, haven't you? Honestly, I know we have. Someone special, isn't he? They both are. And there's a committed team behind them, all determined to see Richard live.